Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So today, I took a look at John Tornblum's PS5 SDK just to see if there was any movement on it over the last couple of days. And well, obviously, there is some movement that has been happening there. John's BD-JB PS5 exploit is really beginning to be the exploit for the PlayStation 5. In terms of it absolutely has caught up to WebKit, it also seems extremely stable, and we're constantly seeing progress on it. Now, over the last couple of days, if we go over here and we go into the commits here, then we can see there is a bunch of brand new samples that's been added. So this one right here over on January the 7th, which was a hardware info sample. And in here is obviously the code for that. There is also cosmetic fixes. There's another payload that came out to list all files. And then there was a few other samples that he created. Now, if you take a look at the code here, we'll go back to the main site, we'll go into samples, and you can see here are some of those samples that I just mentioned. Now, again, for the most part, John does not release these as L files, which I really wish he would do that. So John, if you are listening, it would really help if there is samples or compiled samples over here in releases, especially with the BD-JB. I found personally a lot of people can't get the ISO to build. So again, as always, in the description below, I will leave a link to where you can grab one of the ISO images or grab the ISO image as well as get these payloads. So I thought that for today, what we would do is I would fire up the PlayStation 5 and we would run some of these new payloads together just to see what John's been up to and also just to play around with some new PS5 homebrew. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. Okay, so when I was compiling some notes for this video, I did notice that over here, there is a person that obviously has done all kinds of cool stuff with the themes, but they also have a folder where it already has all of those payloads. So it's much easier if you would like to, to just come over and just use their work. Again, I will link them in the description because they built all of this. I didn't. So the very first thing that you would want to do with this is that you would want to come up here to the PS5 BD-JB Elf Loader, and this is version 1.4, and you'd want to come in here and you'd want to download this. Once you download this ISO right here, you're going to want to use some sort of tool like Image Burn in order to burn it to a Blu-ray disc. Now, I've went ahead and I've downloaded it and I have burnt it to a disc. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to switch over to my PS5 and we're going to get it ready. Okay, and I did want to start this out showing you that if you insert the disc, you will see that it does say PS5 BD-JB Elf Loader version 1.4. So once you see that and you see this icon, well, then you are ready to run it. So let's just go ahead and hit the play button there. And by the way, you may have an older version of BD-JB. Just make sure you use that brand new ISO. That's where it's really starting to get stable. Okay, as you can see here, it's now saying press X to start here. So we are going to press X. It's now a lot more readable than it was in the past. It's got the bigger font. So again, it's only getting better. And this is really where you're starting to see all of those cosmetic changes that John mentioned in the GitHub repo coming to life. Okay, so now at this point, we now have an Elf Loader running on port 9020. And so now I'm going to switch back over to the PC. 
Okay, so back over on the computer, what I have done is I've went ahead and I have downloaded all of these files right here, and I've basically copied them into a instance that I have of Windows Subsystem for Linux. And what I am doing is, is that I'm going to run these payloads just through Netcat. Now, the reason I want to use the command prompt versus Netcat GUI is, is that you won't see the output if you use Netcat GUI. So let's just go ahead and let's jump into Windows Subsystem for Linux. Here I am. I'm in Windows Subsystem for Linux. This is an Ubuntu instance in case you want to try this yourself. And let's just go down through some of these files. So the very first one right here is the partition mount. I covered this in a previous video that I will link to. Really what you can do here is that you have the ability to mount certain folders or directories on your PS5's hard disk drive to give you the ability to read and write to those directories. Next up is a bunch of the brand new ones that we just saw from John Tornblum's GitHub site. So there is hardwareinformation.elf, list all files, and a few others. Let's just go ahead and let's begin by taking this very first one here called hardwareinformation.f. Now, in order to run that, we will need to use this command right here. Netcat with a Q0 flag, the PS5's IP address, the port number, which it's listening on, which is 9020, and then what is the name of the L file? So once you get all of that complete, you would just press enter. And there we go. We get the model number. We get the serial number, which I may blank out. We get the CPU temp and the CPU frequency. So that is really cool that you can retrieve some of that hardware information just simply with running this L file. So awesome. If you want to find out what your model is, well, then you can easily do so by running this payload. Let's take the next one in the list here, which is list all files and run list all files dot elf. And so at this point, actually, I just heard my Blu-ray drive just spinning up. And so now it's going to list every file. So that's really cool. So we could just simply scroll up and we can see how the file system is structured. And yeah, there is a lot of stuff obviously on that because that really is an operating system. Okay, let's clear the screen here and let's go in and let's run the listlogs.elf. Okay, so listlogs.elf. Interesting, so here is all of the log information. So I just scrolled up to the top here and we can see that there is a device status updated, battery status change. So battery status zero, battery level, a login, receive event. So it does look like there is quite a bit of stuff that is in here. So go through this on your own PS5 and let me know what you found. Is there anything in here that is very interesting to you? Is there something that I should look at? You can see right here, Blu-ray media, media channel bit length, and then there it is, a Blu-ray disc, 33 gigabytes, a layer. I'm not sure if that was a disc that I inserted, which it does seem like that would probably be that. Um, one thing that you could do is you could insert a disc run this again, and then see what comes back out of it. But again, this log could be very helpful, especially to developers. Okay, so the next one is pop underscore pirate, which I'm not sure what this one does right now, so let's just try it. <laughs> I trust anything from John, so I believe that you don't have to worry too much about running some of these. So what we see here is we see the firmware version, and this is a 3.20 kernel database is right here. There's a PID, UID, and then UCRED, and then UID. And so the last one here is going to be processview.elf. So let's run that one. These are the processes that's running right now. And right there, you can see the bdj.elf is running. 
the player is also running right here, the player core, which is how we're getting the BD-JB. If we scroll up, we can see all of these SCE, which is obviously Sony Computer Entertainment. A camera driver was been loaded, obviously kernel, the HDMI event, uh, cam, an audit, uh, and then a couple of other things, as we can see right here. So that is pretty much it. I believe we covered everything in the latest payloads that John has created. And uh, hopefully you got a little something out of this. For me, as an enthusiast, obviously the hardwareinformation.elf could be very useful, as well as just understanding the file directory with the list all files.f. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for this one, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!